everybody, it's Reckless, and welcome to Breaking the Fourth Wall. So, in this video, I will be going over the Iron Lord artifacts, a little bit of backstory about them, what they do, and at the end, I will also be letting you guys know which I feel is best for PvE and for PvP. So, without further ado, let's get started. Now, the majority of the information I'm going to be giving you guys is from the Game Informer September 2016 magazine. The first Iron Lord artifact I will be going over is the Memory of Radagast. Its description reads, Described as the first among equals, Radagast the Titan was the King Arthur of the group and strode into battle with a mighty sword in hand. His artifact adds a new ability for sword-heavy weapons, letting you reflect energy-based projectiles, including everything from an ogre's blasts to a crucible opponent's rocket. The second artifact we'll be talking about is the Memory of Perun. The field commander of the Iron Lords was a consummate strategist, and her situational awareness went beyond even fellow hunters. If you bear her artifact into battle, the enemy guardians with full supers are highlighted yellow, and all enemies with low health are highlighted red for easy targeting. The third artifact is the Memory of Yolder. A particularly close companion of Saladin, Yolder was a mighty titan champion who ran bravely into battle without a thought for her own safety. Her artifact bears an ability that many players have longed for since the game's launch. The ability to completely eliminate sprint cooldown, allowing your guardian to ceaselessly charge ahead. The fourth artifact is the Memory of Silamar. Silamar was proud, wrathful, and brilliant, and the architect of the Iron Temple that sits atop Fellwinter Peak. He was a defense-oriented titan, always looking for a way to offer better protection. As such, his artifact provides a unique ward, the ability to dramatically reduce any damage inflicted through damage over time, or dot effects, it should be a welcome deterrence, especially since the infamous Thorn hand cannon is returning in year three. The fifth artifact is the Memory of Fellwinter. The great enigma of the Iron Lords, Fellwinter was an Iron Lord with good intentions, but sometimes questionable and unusual ways of interacting with the light. The Warlock discovered the mountaintop retreat that would become the Iron Lord's home. His artifact offers the most dramatic gameplay modifier. Lose your super, but gain an extra grenade and melee charge, a boost to all your stats, and orbs recharge your grenade and melee abilities. The sixth artifact is the memory of Gellion. The hunter named Gellion may have been a sullen pessimist, but few doubted his assessments of the situation on the ground, no matter how dire. Guardians that wield his artifact gain detailed radar at all times and radar persists when aiming primary weapons. The seventh Iron Lord artifact is the Memory of Scory. If Radagast echoes the legends of Arthur, then Scory is Merlin. This legendary battle bard and warlock inspired her allies with songs and wisdom. Guardians who follow in her footsteps use her artifact to glow with an inspiring light that speeds up super recharge for all nearby allies. The eighth and final artifact is the memory of Timur. Creepy and misunderstood, Timur's warlock powers and demeanor almost recall those of a controlling necromancer. Guardians willing to flirt with Shadow can take up Timur's artifact and transform their melee attack giving it a chance to turn low power minions of darkness into allies. These enemy creatures fight at your side, turning their weapons on confused fellow aliens. Another melee a few seconds later puts them back in their right mind or the effect expires after 30 seconds. So that is actually all of the artifacts for all eight of the Iron Lords. However, there are not just eight Iron Lords. There are actually 10. And let me explain. So, the survivors. Only the eight Iron Lords who fell 
when sealing away SIVA have their own named artifacts. But Candy players know that two more heroes once stood at their side. Saladin, the most familiar, he has been hosting the Iron Banner to hone the light of newer Guardians and prepare them for the threat of Siva's reemergence. But the sniper named Ephrodite also may have survived, as she has no statue in the mausoleum. Bungie won't be waiting long before exploring the mystery of her disappearance. So this confirms that there are two more actual Iron Lords. Now let's get into where I feel these artifacts can be used in the best places. So we're gonna start with the Memory of Radagast, which reflects energy-based projectiles and rockets. Now I feel this is best used in PVE and not so much PVP. And it's only for the simple fact that there are a lot more enemies using energy-based projectiles in PVE than there are PVP. Now, where the memory of Radagast will shine is in Trials of Osiris, because everybody's using rockets, almost everybody. So this will be one good way to counteract that. Now, the next artifact is the memory of Perun, which highlights enemy guardians with full supers yellow and all enemies with low health red. Now this would be good in PVE, however, I feel it would shine a lot more in PVP. And if this does work the way I think it will, then it'll also shine enemy guardians that have low health in red as well. As for the next artifact, which is the memory of Yolder, which gets rid of the sprint cooldown, it pretty much gives you unlimited sprint, which is amazing. And that could be used greatly in PVE and in PVP as well. The fourth artifact, which is the Memory of Silamar, reduces damage over time effects or dot effects. Now, I feel that this would be very, very good in PVP, especially given that Thorn is indeed coming back, unless, unless Siva Fallen do dot damage. Now, we have yet to see any enemy in Destiny so far that does any type of damage over time. However, I would not put it past Bungie if some of the SIVA Fallen actually do damage over time. And if that is the case, then I want you guys to remember that you heard it here first. Next is the Memory of Felwinter, which you do lose your super, but you are given an extra grenade and melee charge, a boost to every stat, and orbs charge your grenade and melee abilities. Now, I do feel this is a good artifact for PvE and PvP, be just for the simple fact of its versatility on so many different subclasses is enormous. The sixth artifact is the Memory of Gellion, which gives you a detailed radar at all times, including when aiming primaries. Now, I feel that this artifact pretty much shines like the best in PvP, not so much PvE, but my only issue with this is I don't know, or we don't know, how it's going to work in Inferno. Now, as you know, Inferno does not allow you to have any type of radar, so we're gonna have to see whether Bungie actually allows this artifact to work while playing Inferno, or if it doesn't. However, it's because of this artifact that I don't feel that the exotic helmet, the knucklehead radar, for the Hunter will be making an appearance in year three. The seventh artifact is the Memory of Scory, which speeds up supers for all nearby allies. Now I feel this is good in PVE and PVP, however, only when doing certain things that require at least six people. Um, so in PVP, 6v6, in PVE, the raids. Now, my only thing with this is I wanna know if this will stack on another guardian in your team that also has it. If it does, this thing will be great. And the last artifact is the Memory of Timur, which you have a chance to turn low power minions of the darkness into allies for 30 seconds. And if you give it a few more seconds, if you tap them again with your melee, then you can obviously turn them back to normal. Now this I say is strictly for PVE. There, there's no minions of the darkness in PVP, so it doesn't help out that well in PVP at all. So with all that said, out of all eight of these Iron Lord artifacts, my eyes are only looking towards five of them. 
And those five are the Memory of Yolder, Memory of Felwinter, Memory of Delian, Memory of Scory, and the Memory of Temur. Given my playstyle, I don't feel that the Memory of Radagast or the Memory of Perun will do me any good. And as for the Memory of Silamar, well, we're going to have to see how that actually works when it comes to the Siva Fallen and in PvP. So let me know which artifacts you guys want to get your hands on in the comments below, as well as if you guys agree or disagree with anything that I said in the video. This brings us to the end of the video. Let me know what you guys think of it in the comments below. If you feel this video was helpful, please feel free to share it. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Reckless, and remember, own your success, and I will see you guys later.